Welcome to a lesson on the normal distribution. If you were to stand at the door of your math class and watch the students coming in, think about how the students would enter. A few would arrive early, then more and more students come in. Finally, the number of students entering decreases with a few students arriving late. So the distribution of the number of students arriving might take on this shape here, which is called a bell-shaped curve though the bell-shaped curve can take on various shapes. If we were to measure height or shoe size of males and females, in most cases, the distribution of the data would fit a similar distribution. In fact, this distribution is so common it is called the normal distribution. However, it is also called the Gaussian distribution. Other data that would resemble a normal distribution include IQ scores, SAT scores, the lifespan of light bulbs, and one of my favorite, kernels of corn popped when popping microwave popcorn. If you've ever popped microwave popcorn, you know it starts popping slowly, then pops quickly, and then slows down again. Before we discuss all the characteristics of the normal distribution, let's look at a few normal distribution curves. All the curves illustrated here demonstrate the normal distribution. The mean and standard deviation affect the shape of the bell curve, though the distribution will still have the same characteristics of the normal distribution. So now let's talk about the characteristics of the normal distribution. Number one, the mean, median, and mode are all equal and located at the center of the distribution, highlighted here. Next, the distribution follows the empirical rule also called the 6895-99.7 rule, which means approximately 68% of the data follows plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean, approximately 95% of the data follows plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean, and approximately 99.7% of the data follows plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean. So our text uses these percentages, though some texts may use more accurate percentages given here. Let's talk more about the empirical rule, or the 6895-99.7 rule. We use mu for the mean and sigma for standard deviation. So 68% of the data falls between the mean and plus or minus one standard deviation. So because of the symmetry, we could say that 34% falls between the mean and one standard deviation above the mean, and 34% falls between the mean and one standard deviation below the mean. And because 95% of the data falls between the mean and plus or minus two standard deviations, notice half of 95% would be 47.5%. So 47.5% would be between the mean and two standard deviations above the mean here. Notice how if we subtract the 34 percent, that tells us that 13.5 percent falls between one and two standard deviations above the mean, as well as 13.5 percent between one and two standard deviations below the mean. So representing the normal distribution in this way can also be helpful. And then finally, because 99.7 percent of the data falls between the mean and plus or minus three standard deviations. If we divide 99.7 in half, that would give us 49.85 percent, which means 49.85 percent falls between the mean and three standard deviations above the mean here. So if we take 49.85 percent, subtract 34 percent, subtract 13.5 percent, that would leave us with 2.35 percent of the data between two and three standard deviations above the mean, as well as 2.35 percent between two and three standard deviations below the mean. So again, it can be helpful to represent the normal distribution this way as well. And this is all because of the symmetry of the normal distribution. Let's take a look at some examples. In a call center, the distribution of the number of phone calls answered each day by each of the 12 receptionists is bell-shaped and has a mean of 63 and a standard deviation of three. 
So we know mu equals 63 and sigma equals 3. Using the empirical rule, what is the approximate percentage of daily phone calls numbering between 60 and 66? Well, notice 60 is one standard deviation below the mean, and 66 is one standard deviation above the mean. So more specifically, we can say that 60 is equal to the mean of 63 minus one times the standard deviation which would be mu minus one sigma, or one standard deviation, and 66 is equal to 63 plus one times standard deviation, which would be mu plus one standard deviation. And therefore, we have mu plus or minus one standard deviation, which by the empirical rule we know represents 68% of, in this case, the number of daily phone calls. which would be the percent of data in this region here. Next, the scores of a midterm are normally distributed with a mean of 85% and a standard deviation of 6%. So again, we know that mu equals 85% and sigma equals 6%. Find the percentage of the class scores above and below the given score. Again, use the 68, 95, 99.7 rule from the text. So notice that the first score is 91%. Notice that 91% is one standard deviation above the mean. So 91% is equal to the mean of 85% plus one times the standard deviation. So we have mu plus one standard deviation. So looking at the normal distribution, 91% would be here. And we know that 34% of the data falls between the mean and one standard deviation above the mean. And then half the data is below the mean. So 50% plus 34% means 84% of the data, or the midterm scores, are below 91%. And therefore, 100% minus 84%, or 16% of the midterm scores are above 91%. Next, we have a score of 73%. Well, notice that 73% would be two standard deviations below 85%. So 73% is equal to the mean of 85% minus two times the standard deviation of 6%. So here we have mu minus two standard deviations, which means the score of 73% would be here we need to be careful here. We cannot say that 2.35% of the test scores would be below 73% because this does not represent 100% of the test scores. But we do know that 50% of the test scores are above the mean, which would be the percent of test scores over here on the right. So this would be 50%. And then because we know that 95% of the test scores fall between plus or minus two standard deviations, and therefore half of 95%, or 47.5%, would fall between the mean and two standard deviations below the mean, meaning 47.5% of the test scores would be in this region here. And therefore, 50% plus 47.5%, or 97.5% of the test scores would be above 73%. And therefore, 100% minus 97.5%, or 2.5% of the midterm scores 
are below 73%. Okay, I think we'll stop here for this introductory video. I hope you found this helpful.